Hello everyone, Doc Ron Bio here again to talk about an important biological concept, uh, this being homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes of the same size and with the same genes at the same loci or locations on the chromosome. You can see here from this homologous pair that uh, they're roughly the same size and that they have genes in the same location. So here's a gene. Here's a gene, and here's a gene. This is very useful when performing uh, genetic crosses and when uh, performing meiosis prior to those genetic crosses. So you can see here that these are homologous chromosomes. If they had the same red gene at this locus right here, uh, the same blue gene at this locus right here, and the same green gene at this locus right here. So those locations never differ. Students oftentimes ask me, well, how do you know where a gene is going to be on a chromosome? And the answer is, is that's where that gene is. That's the location on that particular chromosome. So for chromosome number one, the locus of this particular gene is right here, and it's right there every single time. Um, I also go out of my way for my students to draw you know, when I'm drawing these cartoon um, chromosomes, to draw them the same size so that they know chromosome number one is this particular size, right, and that that's not going to, to vary. So chromosome one is that big, okay? In a diploid organism that has two sets of chromosomes, there will be two homologous chromosomes, okay? Uh, one chromosome number one came from mom in the egg. So we see that contribution right here. This is the chromosome that mom gave this organism, and the other homologous chromosome came from dad in the sperm, and that's this chromosome right here. The genes at each locus are specific. So, for example, I'm going to give these genes on this chromosome number one some names. So the red chromosome at this locus is a gene for dimples. This Gene right here at this locus is the gene for Widow's Peak. And the gene at this locus, the green gene, uh, is the gene for attached earlobes. Okay? So each of those is unique. It is a specific gene. So I like to be really specific here. And let me ask you a question. So I just went and described the fact that there is a gene for dimples. And I'm looking here at this homologous pair of chromosome number ones. So those are two chromosome number ones. How many dimple genes are there in that pair? Okay. You may initially be frustrated to find out that there is only one. Okay. So there is only one dimples gene, and it is found at this specific locus right here. Okay, so there's only one. However, there are two copies of the dimples gene shown here in red at this locus in this diploid organism. There are two copies of this gene because the organism is diploid and has two chromosome number ones. One of those chromosome number ones it got from dad in the sperm, the other chromosome number one it got from mom in the egg. So again, there's only one gene for dimples, but diploids have two copies of them. That is why our genotypes have two letters when we draw them, okay? So there are two copies in a diploid cell. Now you can get alternative versions of a gene Okay, so here we're going to describe what an allele is. So for this dimples gene, you can have alternative versions of the dimples gene, uh, and oftentimes we label them with capital and lowercase letters depending on the genetics there. Okay, so in the case of the dimples gene here, which is in red, uh, each chromosome will have one copy of the gene, thus it can only have one allele per chromosome, okay? So the contribution here from dad for the G, uh, dimple gene 
has the capital D allele. The allele from mom here at this locus has a lowercase recessive allele for the dimples gene. Okay? Okay, so in this case, the alleles are different, making this diploid a heterozygote. So this is literally a zygote that has mixed alleles, in this case, capital D and lowercase d, okay? So one is dominant and one is recessive in this specific example. Here's an analogy that may help settle this, this, uh, this situation with what is a homologous chromosome, uh, how many genes are there at a certain locus, how many copies, what's an allele. So here is a, a 2018 Honda Fit, okay? In the year 2018, Honda did not make two, three, four, five thousand different versions of the 2018 Honda Fit, okay? There is one model of that car. It is the 2018 Honda Fit. Contrary to what you might see out on the road, because there will be many of them, there's only one, one model, okay? Um, the Fit does come in different versions, however. It comes in alternative versions. Um, and if we look at it with respect to paint color, you can see different versions like the black 2018 Honda Fit here or the blue 2018 Honda Fit here, okay? So these are alternative versions of the same car with one slight variation, that being the paint color. If you have two 2018 Honda Fits that are both blue, meaning they're not different versions of each other with respect to the paint color, um, you're looking at a situation that would be homozygous for different for, for genes, right? So uh, going back to the dimples gene, if you had a situation where you had capital D, capital D, you would be homozygous for the single dimples gene. If you were lowercase d, lowercase d, you'd still be homozygous, in this case recessive, for that single dimples gene. So here we have two copies of the 2018 Honda Fit, and they're both identical in paint color. They're both blue, okay? Going back to this image, if this were a cell, um, in this particular case, we'd be looking at a heterozygote. Okay. Okay. Well, Many genes have more than one allele. In this example, we have three possible different paint colors. Let's let this analogy carry out with them being three different alleles of that same single dimples gene, right? This is three different paint colors of the 2018 Honda Fit, okay? So here we have uh, blue, black, and now we're adding yellow. Even with the additional color, however, diploid organisms that have only two chromosomes can only have two alleles in their genotype, one for each gene at a specific locus on the chromosome. So um, let's say, you know, in this case, you have a one allele and a two allele. You can't add an extra three. That's not possible. So you only have space for this allele and you only have space for this allele. Okay, you can make any combination that you want, but at most you only have one, two, this one, and this one. Okay, it doesn't matter if there are three alleles, doesn't matter if there are 400 alleles. You can only have two in your genome if you're a diploid organism with genes at that particular locus. So understanding homologous chromosomes and what they represent is essential in studies of meiosis and genetics once you've mastered this, uh, you'll be able to perform meiosis readily, and you'll be able to perform genetics cross crosses much easier. I hope this video helps you understand specifically what a homologous chromosome is. Let me know what you think below, and we'll see you next time.